Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and welcome to our 43rd webinar. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Lindsay and I'm a marketing analyst here at LumaPrints. We host these webinars every other week to help out, not only provide uh, insights on marketing, but talk about our products and anything new going on with us, as well as other topics as well, especially um, after hearing your guys' feedback. We love to take those topics and um, actualize them into full-length webinars. So. Um, I appreciate you guys' feedback and hearing from you guys has been very useful for us developing this uh, series, if you will. And just as a reminder, we host these live every other Thursday at 10 a.m. And then afterwards, we upload them onto YouTube. So if you cannot always make it to this hour, which makes sense, some people are working, some people are busy, um, feel free to check us out afterwards on YouTube. Uh, you can subscribe to us or just check out our webpage uh, on YouTube, whatever, um, just to see when we upload. We usually upload a couple days after, um, if not the following week on Monday or Tuesday, just to give you a rough estimate. Um, but since our last webinar, uh, last time for webinar 42, we primarily talked about short form video content and how that could benefit you and your business, specifically talking about um, TikTok, TikTok shop, Instagram reels, and shopping on Instagram as well. Um, so if that is of interest to you, uh, I suggest checking out our YouTube uh, page for that video. Um, that one was a very interesting topic for me, especially as TikTok itself is a relatively new app, um, but they've kind of propelled very quickly in terms of connecting the content to um, the purchasing factor that comes to online stores. So um, they've been very strong and strategic with that. And I guess if it's something of interest for you and something you're looking into that is integrated shopping in your social media and also in general marketing on social media, definitely recommend that video. But for today, we're going to be talking about automation tools for marketing and um, you know how this can help you and your business develop further. Of course, I think that um, we're going to be talking about a lot of tools and a lot of information. Um, uh, I know it could get overwhelming at times, but I think today's goal primarily is to basically make uh, marketing easier for you guys. And um, the reason why I say this is because I think what puts a lot of our customers in a unique spot is that your artists is, um, but you're more than that, especially if you sell art online, because what for some people is just one role or two roles you guys have three roles and that's and even sometimes four but usually it's you know creating the art itself it's selling the art on your platform it's customer service and it's social media marketing and anything else that might come with your business um so I know that in times like that you're probably handling a lot of things all at once and um for us what we want to talk about today is tools and ways that you can make it a meant more efficient, at least in the marketing and selling art realm, because, um, you know, you should probably focus on your art. And that's probably your favorite part of um, your business is the art creation portion. Um, so how can we make the marketing and sales portion a bit more easier for you, less time consuming, less of a headache, um, especially if it's not your forte nor your interest per se. But, you know, ultimately, you want to get good sales. Ultimately, you want to have a very uh, useful and efficient store that gets your customers to point A at the beginning of the website to point B, which is at checkout and getting them through that funnel, if you will. Um, so uh, if this is of interest of you and there's some questions you have along the way, feel free to write them in the chat. Um, otherwise, you could always save your questions for the end um, in the chat, or you could um, also uh, unmute yourself and ask me as well. So with that being said, um, let's get into it. Let me go ahead and share my presentation. And again, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask. So why personalize marketing? And um, why should you as an online seller care about this component of marketing for your store? Um, I guess kind of putting in my own opinion on this and kind of um, where I stand, ultimately um, personalized marketing has been developing at a rapid pace over the past, I would say five years, if not seven. Um, and that's due to how data is, you know, uh, acquired through these websites and how people are efficiently using cookies and data from 
customers' behaviors. And so, you know, with all this data, um, we use apps, we use our own analytical skills, and so much more to really tailor an experience for our customers. And um, using their data, we can make their experience feel very unique to them, and thus leading to a much more inclination to purchase from, you know, the store. And um, from my, you know, personal, uh, I would say, uh, conversations with customers who kind of put some extra effort into personalizing the experience for their customer base, um, they've noticed great results and they've noticed that it's had a positive impact. And um, it's even kind of verified here with the um, statistics brought by uh, Epsilon, who mentioned that 85% of consumers are more likely to purchase from businesses who offer these personalized experiences. And even with websites that have interactive and personalized content, they're noticing a higher conversion rate and compared to websites that have none of these efforts made, which, you know, not to say that they're bad, but it's just showing the growth that happens when you do put efforts towards personalization of, you know, your customer's experience and the offers. Um, and to some people, you know, hearing personalized marketing, you might not know what that looks like. And if you're ever a consumer on a website, on Amazon, on any online store, really, um, it's the way that these stores make these small efforts to make the experience very unique to you. It could be as simple as when you're looking up a product on Amazon, for example. Let's say you're looking for a charger. If you're looking for a charger, you look it up, but you didn't find any useful results. Next time you come back onto uh, Amazon, they'll start highlighting some key popular chargers for you. And then they'll be also offering um, highlight sales. And that will get you more inclined to make that purchase. It's things like that that basically make the experience not only unique to the customer, but makes sense for what the customer wants and what the customer needs, and thus creating a much stronger purchasing uh, inclination. And then, of course, uh, you could, as you develop this further, you're going to also learn more about your customer and who your customer is. So even outside of your website, um, in terms of other marketing, such as social media, you'll gain a lot of information from, you know, your customers that you can start, you know, figuring out how to cater that type of demographic on social media. If you notice people are buying a certain art uh, at a rapid pace or much more likely during this time, is it time to create adjacent art? Is it time to um, create art that complements the art that's selling really well. And so these are kind of data points that I feel like are very useful for you and also for your customers into getting them to purchase something from your store. And so I think one of the things I get commonly asked and um, some things I've heard in passing is um, email marketing and what that looks like for you as a store owner. I know some people, they struggle with getting their emails read and uh, they have difficulties with uh, engaging through clicks and through um, subscriptions or even you know getting the customer to go onto the website from the email. And so if you're not using a tool or uh, automation, um, app, I would highly suggest so. Um, there's just so many benefits and so many insights you could gain from using these automation uh, websites or automation apps, um, which I'll get into which ones uh, I would recommend. But um, just to list some features, I, as you see here, um, automated workflows, automated segmentation and behavioral based triggers. Um, for automated workflows, that's basically discussing how, or not, that's basically covering how, um, you know, you could create several types of emails for several different purposes. And um, based on how your customer is interacting with your store or interacting with your uh, general emails, then those uh, points kind of automatically get sent to your customer. Um, a good example would be if your customer left a shopping cart item on your website, then the automatic workflow for the app would be like, okay, well, it's been a couple days since they last came back to the store to check out 
their product that's in their cart, let's remind them. They might have forgotten or they were looking around and ultimately um, ended up going to other sites, but who knows, they may have not made a purchase yet. So um, then they'll send an email about, you know, checking out the cart that has been left at your website. So that's just one example. There's also many other ways that you can automate workflows or um, basically trigger emails that uh, basically see an action and then uh, result in an email. And these can be very useful just with customer retention and also finishing the sale. Um, automated, automated segmentation, this could take into consideration things such as, you know, your customer demographic, the region where they're based in, um, their general behaviors when it comes to interacting with your uh, emails. Um, if they notice, for example, someone always clicking on your emails, then how can we send more insightful ones to them where they're more inclined to read through it and probably see, you know, an offer or a discount? you know, as a result of them, you know, constantly engaging, interacting with your emails, uh, that might lead to someone who's more inclined to make a purchase. And then, of course, behavior-based triggers kind of relate to automated workflows. But in this case, you know, if they see something, if the app sees something going on your website or your customers clicking on certain products, not necessarily checking out and going through the checkout process, but say they're interacting with a uh, product a couple times, maybe they went to the same product five separate times. And so they're heavily considering purchasing it. And thus, you know, an email might be bait triggered and be sent to them. And there's other um, points. There's also heat maps that they take into consideration. Um, maybe them clicking on sales campaigns and um, maybe certain banners. So there's a lot of customizability when it comes to uh, these uh, automation uh, apps. And in the end, it will result in really good communication with your customer. It'll let them know that, you know, you're very engaged with what they're interested in. Um, if you do manual marketing uh, emails, then oftentimes, unfortunately, you know, you can't always email them at the most relevant points. Oftentimes, uh, you'll be emailing them because of a sale or a uh, over-encompassing theme for something. But they... It's just way too much time to actually send personalized emails or emails based off of what they have done or interacted with on your website or email. So um, think of it as definitely the uh, automation part as kind of all the grunt work that you don't have to do to keep up to date with your customers and to keep them engaged. Um, and it's just a really great way to do passive conversion rates, where once you set up an email uh, trigger, you don't have to really worry about it. It's good to use and over review for data purposes and look at the analytics, of course, but at the very least, you can kind of do the hard work at the beginning, create the emails, um, use the suggestions that they offer, and then work from there. But ultimately, it doesn't take as much time as it would if you were to create emails every week um, and then coding them and then uh, making sure that the emails feel fresh and different all the time. Um, here, it's a lot more efficient, I would say. Yeah, but we could look at some tools or some of the apps that I would suggest for this one. And we could go through them. I have some experience with a couple of these and um, I could also put my input as well, but we can start with MailChimp. Um, for MailChimp, I would say that they're probably the most beginner friendly um, uh, automation marketing email website. And I've used that a couple of times and I could at least attest to it being um, very useful. It was for my first job. Um, it was my first, uh, I would say, email marketing um, app. And I just think it's easy for beginners. Uh, if you use things like Canva, you'll probably be a lot uh, very used to the interface you see on MailChimp. Um, a lot of drag and drop. And uh, it's just easy to move the, um, I would say, the format of it to give it a very certain look. They also have um, things like uh, templates that are very nice looking already, and you can work with those. Um, their audience segmentation is good. Uh, you could target specific uh, lists in your group. Sorry, you could target specific lists within your email uh, bank, if you will. And if you notice that there's a certain region or a certain demographic that you're trying to hit, you could just, you know, create uh, basically 
the triggers to be sent to this customer based only this specific email. And so that'll help with the personalization part of the emails that you send out to your customers. Um, automation, as I mentioned before, most of these have uh, built in automation that help with workflow and trigger certain points uh, during the customer's journey. Um, their analytics and reporting is very easy to understand. And um, it also offers detailed insights, which you usually find with most of these um, apps, but things like click-through rates, A-B testing, open rates, these things are very important. Um, to consider. And if you're doing manual emailing, you might not always get those features. So at the very least, if you can use free um, apps such as MailChimp, they, I think they have a free uh, trial or not even a free trial. They have a free option that's a bit more robust than their uh, premium one. Um, but it's still good nonetheless, because it gives you insight on data, which you would otherwise not get if you sent traditional manual emails. Um, for HubSpot, uh, moving on to the next one, um, this one uh, will, you know, I would say could apply to the next themes that we'll talk about. And it's generally a really strong all-in-one inclusive integration for your store. Um, it will allow for those emails to kind of intertwine with what you have going on in your store. So if you have um, other apps such as heat map registers or um, I would say, you know, customer service chats and things like that. Um, HubSpot does a lot of that work as well. And if you have it connected with your email and then connected with your website, it just makes for a very versatile app. Um, I will say it does come at a price. So keep that in mind. Um, do check if there are some uh, better options in terms of pricing. But overall, I would say this is great for intermediate to enterprise sized businesses um, who need um, a app but don't want to kind of invest in too many different apps. Maybe they want something a bit more inclusive that does the work for them and they're willing to pay the price. This is a good option that I would recommend um, because they just offer so much. But in terms of the email, they offer uh, personalization based on the contents of um, that your customers interacting with. They, again, offer workflow automation, which is, a, I would say, a little bit more uh, advanced than what uh, MailChimp offers. And um, they allow a lot of customizability. So I would say consider this if you're a bit more tech savvy. If you're still in the beginner phase, um, it might be a bit overwhelming, just as an FYI. Um, they also do things like lead scoring. So what this means is they'll rank leads based on engagement and help prioritize sales efforts um, towards specific customers or specific segments. And then they also, like MailChimp, offer great analytics, but I would say that theirs is a bit more tied back to overall marketing goals. You can't necessarily create those marketing goals within MailChimp, but in HubSpot you can. So consider that as a contrast um, between the two. And then lastly, there's Active Campaign, who is um, a bit more advanced and they have a bit more complexity and when it comes to their workflows. So keep that in mind, this is probably for advanced users. Um, if you've used marketing tools before, this might work for you. If you have not, just as a forewarning, it is a bit more uh, advanced and um, you definitely have to pay attention to the details. And if you are looking for that customization, because you know you care about this component of your uh, business, then I highly suggest it. Uh, they do dynamic list segmentations um, based on not only behavior, but demographics and a lot more. So they offer a lot of customization within there. Um, they have a built-in um, CRM and that manages leads and sales pipelines. Um, alongside these email campaigns. So you get to see kind of the uh, funnels, if you will, as you're working with these campaigns or emails. And then of course, personalized messaging is uh, something that is uh, uh, harping back to personalized marketing. And if you can create personalized messages depending on who the customer is, but it's the same kind of email, but it talks to customers differently, that's all the better. Um, and uh, again, is only gonna help uh, strengthen communication between you and your customer. 
And then lastly, multi-channel marketing, which um, also supports uh, social media, landing pages, and integration. So they just overall tie in beautifully with email, social media, and even text messages. So um, if you're looking for something advanced and something a bit more, uh, I would say, uh, personalized for you yourself as the store owner, great option. Um, this one also costs a bit of money. So keep that in mind. Uh, but, you know, if you do use HubSpot or Active Campaign, know that you are getting your money's worth because this will lead into some uh, uh, success if you are using these tools uh, to the best of their ability. And then moving on to another component of, uh, uh, we mentioned it pre four, but CRM or customer relationship management. Um, when it comes to customers and kind of customer service and the engagement you have with the customer directly, either throughout the website, on social media, or um, in the emails, like we mentioned, um, just throughout the sales pipeline, if you will, um, how can we make the purchase successful for you and also your customer, where they feel good about the purchase and they're feeling inclined to even purchase more or more expensive items? Um, and how can we also uh, track their engagement with certain parts of your website or other parts of um, your company. And then of course, from there, um, the next question is with these, with this data that we accumulated, how can we optimize for future customers, for future engagements with the same customer? And how can we then, you know, pivot away from things that aren't working and move towards things that are doing really well with your customer base? Um, so we'll get into uh, specific tools, but ultimately uh, CRM softwares significantly improve customer segmentation and they enhance leads and they just personalize the communication between you and your customer. Um, businesses use CRM data to just uh, tailor um, marketing campaigns and analyzing customers' history of purchases, their interactions and so forth. Um, I would say even robust reporting and uh, capabilities of CRM apps um, can lead to uh, uh, revenues and optimize budget and even help with uh, uh, ROI. Um, ultimately, they help empower businesses and help with targeting marketing efforts. And if you want to boost uh, profits, I would say these are some really great tactics you can use without having to put so much effort into you yourself going into these websites and interacting with your customers directly. This is um, kind of, uh, I would say, a supplementary to customer service that you offer on your website, but also this is more inclined to help with uh, sales. So think of it as a salesperson on your website, analyzing your store, looking at how your customer is hanging out there, and how can they then go from a customer perusing to a customer who's purchasing, and then from a customer who's purchasing, a customer who's purchasing a lot or more um, dollar value. And so we'll get into that. Um, ultimately, uh, we'll get into some apps that are very useful. And uh, I just want you to guys to consider pricing and also consider what might work for you and what might not work for you. Um, here, I went with these three specifically because I thought these were uh, pretty useful overall. And I think they're uh, a bit more budget friendly for most folks, um, depending on what offer, uh, what, um, of course, uh, I would say, uh, what's the word? It depends on which uh, plans you go for. That's the word, sorry. Uh, plans you go for amongst these three, but there's definitely some more, uh, viable options here. And starting with HubSpot, um, I would say they use, they have a very user-friendly interface. Um, their sales tools are very uh, easy to work with, and they also have a free plan, and who doesn't love a free plan? So keep that in mind, um, and if it's free, why aren't you using it? I would say, uh, and at least at the very least, we're testing out to see if it works for your store. And if you're noticing yourself um, kind of enjoying the benefits of HubSpot where they um, have uh, 
a really easy user face and you like the way that they're interacting with your customers, um, consider that you could always step up and upgrade to um, things like Salesforce or Pipedrive. And with Salesforce, they have a lot of customization. They could scale according to what you're looking for. And they have a bit more extensive features who are, or which are very useful for larger enterprises. And um, it is gonna be a bit pricier, but if you find yourself having success um, in HubSpot and you kind of want to explore those features that you like on HubSpot, um, there's definitely going to be more advanced features on Salesforce. And speaking of, I guess, complexities and more advanced um, features, Pipedrive also allows for that. And they have, while an intuitive interface, they also um, provide more dynamic um, uh, features compared to HubSpot as well. Um, they have some good price and I would say they're kind of the intermediary between HubSpot and Salesforce personally. Um, and these tools are just useful for um, uh, data integration, third party systems, and overall enhancing the customer relationship um, on your website overall. Um, it's also, you know, usually connected through API. So if you connected with Luma Prince before, you can connect easily with these features. There's no hard coding per se for you. Um, a lot of these are websites that you can go in without having to do heavy coding for the most part. Of course, if you're a bit more advanced, then you can do that if that's an option that you're interested in. But overall, if you have no familiarity with coding, then these are gonna work just fine. So please don't be intimidated by them. Um, and ultimately, they're going to uh, smooth out uh, the flow of information of what your customer is seeing and then seeing how then in turn you could improve your website uh, and how you could improve their experience individually and overall. So think of it as two ways. Uh, the first way is if, you know, you notice that your customers aren't interacting with a certain feature on your website as it'll be indicated with these apps, then maybe it's time to not put it at the forefront of your page and put it somewhere lower. Whereas if they're constantly searching for a feature on your website because they're clicking on specific links or specific pages on your website, then maybe it might be time to move it to your homepage or move products that were once in your catalog into a featured product on your homepage. And there are many other overall over encompassing improvements you could do for just helping with the customer engagement process and um, things like uh, pop ups that show products that customers were looking at um, uh, questions that you know you ask for your customer and for them to answer back if they're so inclined. Um, also sales features. So there's many components. And if you find yourself kind of overwhelmed with the options, it's worth starting with a couple instead of all of them at once, especially because you don't want to overwhelm your customer at the end of the day. But at least starting with a couple of features that you can then um, implement into your website, such as, you know, offering a deal at the end of their purchase or um, having a pop-up that says subscribe to the newsletter or follow on social media or check out a video that you made about a specific art piece. There could be a couple of things you could start off with and you could gauge the success from there. Again, if you are very new to this, HubSpot is a great place to start. If you have some experience with these and you're looking to really um, hone in on some key features and really look for some customizability when it comes to segmentation, Salesforce and Pipedrive are great options. And so when it comes to techniques for personalized web uh, website uh, content, um, as we're talking about data, we're talking specifically about cookies, mapping, social media, and email activity. And um, when it comes to your website content, as we kind of made small mentions of it previously, um, you want to kind of set goals um, on how this will hopefully and generally um, improve your website and the sales efforts um, in part because you have a better looking website or a website that has all the things your customers need from the get-go. Um, kind of a rule of thumb, if you will, that will help. And some of these uh, apps will probably mention it is how can you get your customer to the purchasing point in as less clicks as possible? Um, think about um, how you would have things of add to cart 
and then also checkout options on your purchasing pages, such as product pages, rather. And so those are some small goals you could set for yourself. Um, goals such as how can I have people to click on my banner more often? Or how can I have people subscribe to my newsletter more often? Um, and so we'll cover kind of that with the apps that I'll mention. Um, and uh, kind of a third step, if you will, after you've looked through the apps and see what you like, use the apps, test them out. Um, measuring successes, which is easily acquired by looking at these um, interfaces of these apps, but um, you want to compare the metric rates uh, between personalized and non-personalized user experiences. Um, that way you can kind of see that these efforts towards personalizing the website content is coming out with uh, profits and conversion rates that make sense for you. Um, and seeing if customers bode well with uh, things such as personalized uh, triggers on your website. Um, it might not always apply to the same customers all the time. Some customers might like it, some customers might not like it, um, but at the very least you can kind of test to see what works and what doesn't work for personalizing um, the website as your customer kind of walks through it and you know searches on the search engine or looks through product pages. Um, here are just a couple tools that I recommend. Um, the first one being Dynamic Yield, and this one they offer personalized customer experiences by uh, working seamlessly with your already existing um, CMS systems and ensuring that content aligns with the customer preference. Um, if they notice your customer doesn't like pop-ups, then they won't be showing more pop-ups. If they notice customers are interacting with these pop-ups, how can we, you know, add a couple more during their purchasing process? Um, so Dynamic Yield kind of covers all that. And um, again, it's just a really good way to uh, make the customer's experience on your website a lot more uh, tailored to them as an individual or them as a niche uh, part of your segment, of your customer segment. Um, so Yield Dynamic is really good for that. Um, I would also say Optimizely is also very useful. Um, they uh, do personal insightful data and kind of work on top of that. Um, so you get to kind of see what the data is that they're taking from it and how they're analyzing it. And you can kind of also work in tandem with the app to then create uh, messaging for your customers on the website, um, on the product descriptor, or even on the homepage and see how that might be useful for your customers when they revisit the website or if they're already on the website and they go on to the next page. Um, a really important factor about all these apps is kind of the real time um, effectiveness of them because while you can look at data for yourself and then from there look at how you can change your website to tailor your customers better, it won't be the same impact as it would be if uh, your website is changing as it's being interacted with in real time by your customers. Um, so uh, I would say that there might be that distinguisher between how you interpret your own data and how these tools might interpret data. Um, it's just going to be a bit more instantaneous, if you will. And uh, that might work for your customer. It, it might not. But at the very least, I've seen some really good successes when things uh, like real-time changes to uh, the customer's experience in the website um, happen. And these efforts are not, you know, um, all for naught, they're pretty useful. And um, as websites develop further, think about how apps interact with you and keep you longer on, for example, social media. Um, they'll start recommending things to you that uh, are related to your interests. Same thing could apply to your website. So if you can think about your website as how can I make the customer stick around, want to look at other products, and also end up with a purchase, how can we make that a bit more uh, impactful for them? And oftentimes it's with uh, effective messaging. And um, another great app that does that is Personalize, which um, uses um, AI or machine learning and behavior targeting to boost the conversion rates through a variety of approaches, um, such as recommendations. Um, they also do email personalizations and third-party uh, 
personalization and dynamic landing pages. And I, you know, people might have uh, their opinions on AI in regards to art, but here I'm primarily talking about it as a means of looking at data and doing the grunt work of um, sales and marketing. And I would say this is less so to do with creativity as it does with looking at numbers and how to respond to those numbers. If a machine could kind of do it for you and you don't have to crunch um, data and make decisions based off of that and it'll save you time so you can work on your creativity, then all power to you. This is a great way to kind of leverage technology as it is now. And um, especially when it comes to understanding marketing and understanding your customer overall, because it is hard and overwhelming sometimes to understand your customers and your customer segments. So leveraging any of these apps and their understanding of data and how they advance and working to understanding your customer um, will be ultimately very useful for you at the end of the day. Hi, I'm back. Um, uh, ultimately, um, I think that with uh, all these apps, I, uh, Feel free to review them all if you want, but I know it's a very uh, overwhelming process to see what apps might work for you. Um, ultimately, uh, I would say focus on one or two of these apps that you feel like called out to you or feel that uh, makes sense for you in your store. Um, they're all gonna have different pricing or trials or offers. Um, as I mentioned, there are a couple free ones, such as MailChimp and HubSpot. Um, if you want to start with those two, I would say go for it, especially if this is your first time kind of dipping your toes into what is utilizing apps for your website to help with the uh, marketing components. Um, if you haven't done any efforts in marketing, I think now is a good time, um, only because, um, you know, static web pages or static emails that don't take into consideration personalization are fine and dandy. However, um, they might not uh, leverage data that you have from your customers to the best of the capability. So you can look at who your customer base is and you can make uh, data points and you could probably really understand your customer base. Um, but think of these apps as kind of a second person um, with you looking at the data and also making distinguishing opinions and um, decisions alongside you that makes sense for you and your customer. So um, even if you have experience in marketing and uh, maybe you've done marketing for a couple of years now on your store, um, it doesn't help to kind of get that quote unquote second opinion from these apps that will in turn just have recommendations based off what they're seeing on your store. Um, again, if you have no experience, these apps do the work for you, but if you have experience, think of it as um, a secondary source for, um, you know, kind of building upon the data that you have and uh, working in tandem with it. If you feel like, you know, some things um, from these uh, apps make sense for you or don't make sense, um, A-B test it, I would say. Uh, testing, testing, testing is a big factor of marketing. And of course, uh, with testing, results are what matter. And uh, there is a huge factor at play, which is always looking at the results of your campaigns. Um, and if you don't know where you're starting or you don't know what your ultimate goal is, I would say set small goals. And if you're noticing that you're able to make those goals, start um, evolving them, making them more complex. Um, and ultimately it's gonna lead to you having better sales. And um, some, easy goals that I would suggest for customers is how can you upsell products? Um, and especially when it comes to art, um, I know some customers offer their art on one or two types of products. Oftentimes there is a more economical option, such as a, a unafraid paper print. And then there's more, um, I would say, higher end products such as a, a framed canvas. Things like that, you can set a goal for yourself of how can I convert customers who usually buy paper prints to then buy framed canvas, which is usually a more higher priced item and thus resulting in more profits per purchase. That's a simple goal you could do. And another goal could be, you know, you have 500 um, email subscribers. How can you get a higher percentage of those subscribers into your website as a result of them reading your email? Um, 
small goals like this, while they might seem, uh, you know, at first you're like, well, I don't know if this is going to yield any results, or I don't know if it's going to make that goal. At the very least, it gives you something to work towards. And even if you don't make that first uh, goal, you can then review it to see, okay, did I get close to it? If so, maybe I just need to tweak it. Or if you completely miss the mark, then how can I reevaluate what I'm doing and maybe set a different goal? and start from there and so um, in tandem with all these apps and apps that you might be implementing into your store um, set goals for yourself and it'll be a lot easier to understand um, what your customer wants and how your customer is interacting with your store um, I think that's about it for me um, in the meantime if you guys have any questions or um, things you want to ask Feel free to sound them off in the chat. Um, raise your hand or uh, unmute yourself if you want to ask a question as well. Um, in the meantime, I just want to uh, answer a question we got from the Google form that I submit into the um, email uh, for the webinar every so often or every time. And that's uh, from Candida. Uh, they asked if we have test print packages just for people to check the quality before they use us. Um, we do offer paper samples and we also offer um, rolled canvas samples. Rolled canvas, if you don't know, is just canvas that hasn't been stretched onto the stretcher bars yet. So it's just the canvas um, flat. And so if you're interested in those, we offer those um, for little to no cost. Um, the first time around at the very least, if they're afterwards, you want to kind of uh, do more samples, then you could feel free to order small pieces of papers or small canvas rolls. Those shouldn't cost more than I would say two to ten dollars per piece, depending on the size that you get. But if you're ever looking to test colors or test how your art looks, because I know not everyone has a uh, calibrated monitor or they're not always sure about the colors. Um, Note that you're always welcome to order small samples through us, the first time being complimentary or discounted. And then um, thereafterwards, if you would like to test, we do offer very economical uh, prices for what are small sizes, such as four by sixes, eight by tens, and so forth. Um, that's my recommendation to you guys. And um, if you ever need to do paper samples, you can always contact us at contact at Luma Prints, and we'll help you guys with that. So. Uh, feel free to work with us on getting samples to you, um, especially if you're new, or also if you ever want to create marketing materials for um, your website, let us know too, and we would be very happy to help you guys with that. Okay, Kim Rojas asked if we made banners. Um, and uh, when it comes to banners, um, Yes and no. I, I, the best way to describe it is that we do prints of all kinds, including panoramics, and we offer peel and sticks uh, as well. And peel and sticks are things you can adhere to the wall or flat surfaces primarily. And we offer custom sizes um, for peel and sticks, um, for paper prints, and for canvases. Um, if you ever visit our Anaheim area, uh, you would see that if you go to our entrance, we have our Luma Prince logo on a really big panoramic um, canvas, and it's been holding up pretty well. So um, just note that our, our um, products in general are suited for indoors. So if you are going to make something with us that's going to have your logo or some sort of uh, marketing material, it's uh, better suited for indoors as opposed to outdoors. And then um, let me just refresh the Google Forms page just to make sure I grabbed everyone's questions. So far, I only have that one question, but feel free if you have questions here to let me know. Um, I'm more than happy to answer them here as well. Let's see. Are peel and sticks removable afterwards? Yes, they are. In terms of their reapplication, um, I uh, cannot uh, guarantee that, but at the very least, they can easily be removed from the wall. Yes. Do you have a web design team or marketing team that you recommend? Um, this is by Kadida. Um, yeah, so at the moment, we don't have necessarily a team uh, for marketing that we recommend, um, but 
because of today's topic, I would say that a lot of the efforts that you would see a traditional marketing team do can be easily done through these websites and apps that I recommended today. Um, as I mentioned, think of them as your, you know, secondary opinion and secondary um, employee, if you will, that is in the marketing team, only because they are looking at the data and analyzing it and thus making decisions based off of that. It's part of the advancements with technology is that they're doing a lot of what people used to do. And, um, you know, it's not as traditional as we used to do like 20 years ago, where most companies did need a sales team with like four to five people. Now it's a bit more efficient um, with uh, using these tools. And it's very useful for you if you are an independent sales owner. Um, and it saves money too, if you uh, don't want to necessarily hire uh, someone who does uh, freelance marketing work as well. Um, if you feel like you need to have someone as a team, um, unfortunately, I don't have those recommendations, but I'm pretty sure that if you look online, you could definitely find some local um, team members um, in your area through uh, um, inquiries for employment, for sure. Of course, no problem. And thank you guys for asking these questions. It's always great to hear from you guys and see what you guys are interested in learning about. Thank you guys. Thank you, Atina. I appreciate the uh, the thanks. Yeah, brand integration through the brand process possible. Um, so uh, when it comes to your website, and uh, let me just review this question real quick. And then, okay, okay, I see what you mean. Um, when it comes to um, branding, pricing throughout the process of a, um, an order, um, specifically, I imagine you're talking about how Luma Prints interacts with your customer and how uh, basically we're integrated with, you know, your store, if you will. Um, just note that we're basically the manufacturing force behind your store. They will not see any Luma Prints logos or the fact that you use our products. So when it comes to the brand integration, it's up to how you set up your website. Um, if you have um, a landing page for your products, it's only going to show your store. And what happens is when you're integrated with us, what the customer will see is your website. They'll make the purchase on your website and they'll receive a purchase confirmation from your website. And so throughout that whole process, they will not see us. All they will see is our products with your branding on it. That includes your uh, uh, your company name on the return to address with our address, of course. So whenever something does rarely go, you know, go wrong, it will be sent back to our address. But also you can include um, a logo on the back of the canvas. Um, and we also offer free printout uh, regular printer paper that you could include your logo offerings and also um, even discounts or QR codes for reviews. So there's a lot of potential for marketing assets once your customer receives the packaging. Um, Additionally, uh, I would say that if you're ever so inclined to advance your uh, marketing products, some customers often ask if they want to use car if they could send us cards for us to put into the um, packaging. And unfortunately, we do not. A solution that I offer oftentimes is you could just uh, purchase on our website an additional fine art paper print with a marketing image that you want to include. And that costs between um, one to three dollars on a small piece of paper print, and that will be included in your purchase. Um, and so if you're interested in that, I would say just put that cost they cost $2.50 to include a paper print in your marketing asset. Um, include that pricing into your overall product cost. So if your paper print uh, is $2.50, your canvas product is $25, um, it's going to be a total of uh, $27.50 for the total cost of your product, plus shipping, plus the profit you want to include with that alongside as well. Um, that's, of course, if you're interested in using um, paper prints that are a bit thicker than what is printer paper. Um, a lot of customers often just offer the printer paper because it's free and uh, courtesy of us, a complimentary feature. And it does a job relatively well for a lot of customers. Some people even do customizations such as printing certificates um, because we offer, um, uh, you could always personalize these printouts per purchase. They don't necessarily have to apply to all your customers. So I've seen people use certificates and um, for these printouts. 
just to give you some ideas, of course. Um, but let me know if there are any other questions. Yeah, no problem. And um, of course, uh, if you guys ever want to um, add these items to your uh, packaging, I've only heard great things from customer feedback about these things. Um, I would say if you ever look online, some of the customer satisfaction portions that people talk about in reviews is they love the packaging or they love how well it was packaged. They love the goodies that come alongside with it or the appearance of it. Um, our packaging is very, I would say, simple and very clean. And so, and it also does not include any Luma Prince um, branding. It will only include your branding. Exactly. And so we're just making it a lot easier for you. Don't even have to worry about always buying new cards to including your packaging. We're gonna be packaging it, including your marketing materials if you're so inclined to using the complimentary paper print or adding in fine art paper print marketing asset as well. So I'm glad to see that uh, we're gonna be of help for you, Candida. And if there are any other questions, please let me know guys. Um, Great questions. And of course, just as a reminder, uh, if you wanted to review any of these uh, parts of this webinar or previous webinars, I will be uploading this onto YouTube um, afterwards. So you could always check us out there. Um, and so if there are no other questions, um, I appreciate you guys coming and hope to see you guys um, not next weekend, not next week, but next, next week. So thank you guys. Um, I'll keep the chat open for a little bit longer for five or 10 more minutes, should there be any other questions that come along. But for now, we can end it here. So thank you guys for joining.